got two people that invited somebody to church today. Now, let me, let me say this. Lord, why do you have me say stuff like this? You know it's going to be razzle-dazzle. Have mercy. Do you understand there are two schools of thoughts about your church being populated, okay? Two thought processes. One is that the pastor should be so anointed that literally people will just seek him out and come to the church, right? Now, I can't tell you how many churches, even word of faith churches, started off with that belief pattern and guess what? Never happened. Okay? It's one school of thought. Now here's the other one. That as a member of the church, especially if the word has worked in my life, I'm speaking from a member, if the word being preached has worked for me in any way, it therefore becomes my absolute God-given responsibility. Watch this. Are you ready for this statement? Ooh, this may break you out of regular church right here. It is my God-given responsibility as a member of that church to fill that church up. Whose responsibility is it to fill the church up? It's the member's responsibility to fill the church up. Now, what happens when that church does not fill up? What does it imply? And it's very easy. As a result, let me say this. This is why 90% of all churches in America have less than 100 people. 90%. Isn't that an astounding number of churches? 90% have less than 100 members in church on a Sunday morning. It's because the members are convinced that it is their responsibility to fill the church up. They're sitting back hoping for the anointing on the pastor to just draw people from the highways and byways. And not that it won't draw, but they need some help. They at least need to know where he's at. Glory be to God, where he or she is. Now, I remember as a young Christian, when I was first born again, I saw, even in the church that I came up in, where people got so comfortable with their routine of church life. Coming to church, you know, outside of church, pursuing their own sort of life and doing their own thing. And really, they didn't really have any time to go out and invite other people. Uh, there was also the case where I think that a lot of those people they really didn't want to. They really didn't want other people coming into the church, messing up their their comfortable church club. You know, like, hey, I don't want to be bothered. Go find your church somewhere else. I don't want to be bothered. No, 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 saints. The job of the pastor is to build up the people that are being preached to, so that they go and do the work of the ministry. The pastor does not go out and evangelize. The people in the church go out and evangelize. If you just take on the commitment and say, you know what, I'm going to invite one person per week, it would make a huge difference. Do you receive that? Yeah, it got quiet in here. My uncle used to say, I feel a brick spirit in here. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. 
Now, then my granny would say, she said, Abbott is tight, but it's right, glory be to God. Now, you, these are the days, folks, where closet Christianity won't get it. You've got to come out of your comfort zone. You've got to come out of, I mean, I'm giving all that I could give. You know, I mean, I uh, came out of a, uh, and I don't say this to give the devil any glory, but I came out of a hospital um, Thursday night on a plane back Friday morning after being released from the hospital. And uh, I told the Lord, I said, now, Lord, you know I got to be healed by Sunday. Glory be to God. I got to go in there, and I've got to get that word out. And I said, Lord, I can't be healed just to go preach. I got to be healed to go do everything else that's needed in the church. So you're going to have to get me together. If I have to go in there at 60%, I'm going. If I have to go at 70%, if I have to go at 50%, I'm going in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, if you'll help, this thing will be easier for all of us. Any idea what I'm doing right now? Anybody know what this is called? You know what this, what's this called? House cleaning. House cleaning. Glory be to God. Have mercy. <laughs> These are some adjustments that we want want to be mindful of making. So next Sunday, I'm going to ask the same question. Hey, who invited somebody to church this week? And I'm just prophesying right now in Jesus' name, everybody is going to have their hand raised. Say, Glory to God, I invited somebody. Can you receive that today? Come on, give the Lord praise. Now, I was inviting people to in church environments where we didn't know any better back in those days and where people were being told that you don't know if, you're, if you can actually make it to heaven, that uh, God wasn't concerned about any other area of your life but you living right and making it to heaven. That's the only thing he was concerned about. And I invited a ton of people to environments like that. I really did. I mean, I, I was, I've always been good at going out witnessing and bringing people in, uh, but I just can't do that anymore. I need those of you that are receiving to help. Do you receive that? Yeah. Let me ask a question. Has anybody's life been enriched at all since you've been hearing this word? Has anybody been blessed? Yeah. Now, I fulfilled. That means I did my job. When are you going to do yours? Your job is to go out and spread it. Lord, be to God. Go out there and get them. You go, that doesn't mean you go ask one and they say no. Guess what? Go ask the next one. Go ask the next one. I guarantee you they are out there. I was, uh, came to church in an Uber last week. And uh, the individual that was bringing me in the Uber, in the Uber said, um, I was just, you know, sensitive, listening to the Holy Spirit, because even though I'm pastoring, I'm always... Just my life, in my personal life, I'm just always open to share the gospel and the good news and witness to people. Does anybody live, have you gotten to that point yet? It's difficult, ain't it? It's, it's difficult to come, I mean, when I'm out and when I'm in airports, you know, Ubers all over the country, I'm still sensitive that I am a representative of the kingdom of God and that people around me are lost and they're and they don't know the Lord, and people are hurting. At any rate, I'm in the Uber, and um, I'm talking to the guy, and I look for any icebreaker I could get in the conversation. And I talk about things typically that are relevant to me. In that particular case, uh, we were talking about um, something as it relates to work, and I begin to share, he asked me what I did for work, and I shared that, uh, that I was in business. The Lord gave me that. Glory be to God. Shared that uh, I'm on the way to church. And you know what this individual did? All of a sudden, he breaks down crying. Breaks down crying. And begins to tell me a story that he died. That he was in a... Um, had an accident on the job and went in the hospital. They gave him too much pain medicine and it killed him for four minutes. 
And then he finally came back and he said, since then, I've never been able to sleep at night. I can't sleep at night. I'm scared. And then he said, and then I wonder, God, why wasn't I good enough for you to go ahead and take me? Why did you leave me here in this wretched planet? Now you see this person is hurting. This person needs answers. Amen. So the door is open. Well, glory be to God. I said, you know what? God didn't have, I said, the reason why you're still here is because you still have a purpose. God has need of you. And what's in front of you is, guess what? Much greater than anything you ever seen. I said, you know what? You maybe didn't get any sleep before, but you're going to get some sleep tonight. I said, come on here, let's pray. Glory be to God. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I break your power. I decree great sleep over this individual. He's going to sleep better tonight than he ever has. In his yeah. entire life. Glory be to God. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you begin to draw him yeah. to yourself right now. Now, if I had just had about ten more minutes, five more minutes, you know what would have happened? He'd have got saved. Now, that's what you do. You take the power out and use it out there in the world. Does that make sense? So, you have to get people healed. Christ through you. Did you know you can lay hands on somebody to get healed? When's the last time you laid your hands on somebody to get healed? A stranger. When's the last time out in the streets or somewhere in the workplace you laid hands on somebody to be healed? You got to change this. We're growing too comfortable. We've got to change this. Call it pressure, whatever you want to call it. It's not pressure. It's exhortation. We got to step out. If you want to see the power of God manifest, you got to put him in a place or an environment where he is needed, where his power is needed. Does that make sense? He came to bring uh, them that are lame, that are broken, that are sick to salvation. The one scripture says that them that are whole, what? Need not a physician. In the church where everybody's already got everything together, glory be to God, we can't get much done in here. We've got to take it outside of here. Amen? You receive that? Okay, let me see. Is there anything else I can fuss about concerning that, Lord? Well, glory be to God, I believe I, I, believe I got it covered. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that anyhow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, uh, I tell you, um, this thing is a give and take between you and me. I know it's not just about our service in the church and the positions we hold. Thank God for all that everyone does concerning that. But our number one call as believers is to be a witness. Is that can I, can I ask just a general question? This is rhetorical now. Don't get up and try to preach no sermon now. That's not what I'm asking. That, that's a little challenging, isn't it? Is that a little challenging? To understand that your life's responsibility is to go out and be a witness? Well, when I was in religion, that's the one thing in the world nobody wanted to do is come out of their comfort zone and go out and spread the gospel. Amen? I tell you, if we have to get to a point to where instead of having services, we go out and walk the streets and get people saved, that's what we'll do. Glory be to God. But under no circumstances are we going to allow ourselves to become just a church country club where we just come and do the same thing over and over and over. Wait, that's not what's going to happen. Amen? Do you receive it? Well, glory to God. Let me have everybody stand, if you will. Uh, while you're standing, um, I want you to, first of all, those of you that have come out to church today, I want you to give yourselves a hand. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank God for all of you that came out to the house of the Lord. Glory be to God. It is a, it is a pleasure to gather with you and worship with you on a weekly basis. Glory to God. Makes me want to run. Hold on, I got something on my chest. Did I get it? Okay. 
Got my wife making sure I'm together. Have mercy. And then um, uh, while you're in the clapping mood, uh, why don't you give a hand to those that are joining us online? Amen. We thank God for you, and we pray that the word is also working for you. Now, um, we're going to worship the Lord concerning our giving. We're going to move fairly uh, quickly here. And uh, if you would like to be a part of the giving today, please go to awofc.org, and you will find multiple options to give and to sow. And the prayer is that you are giving and you are sowing by faith. I want to say something really quick. Uh, even thank God for the amount of people that we have in this church and those that faithfully support this church with their tithes and offering. But if, you, if I can just mention outside of protocol how, how we are doing financially as a ministry. Watch this, Chelsea. So, yeah, bless God if... Uh, if you don't do more, we're going to have to close the church doors. Amen? How do you feel about that? You know better than that. Have mercy. You know we ain't going to get up with, no, with nothing like that. As a matter of fact, the church is doing financially just swell. Glory be to God. Increase is working for us financially. Glory be to God. Isn't that something? Woo I don't know. Somehow it just keeps increasing. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank the Lord. The bills are paid. Uh, there are no termination notices looming anywhere concerning AWOFC. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, you are a part of that. That's one thing about this church. This church is a giving church. Glory be to God. A giving, tithing, soul uh, seed sowing church and uh, I think that is absolutely awesome glory be to God that has been the case since back in the library days we always did way beyond what would be expected for our size amen um, I want you to get a point of contact we're going to go before the Lord and worship our giving in a prayer and then we are going to release our faith through confession as we confess we expect that a transfer from the realm of the spirit is coming to the natural realm into our lives. Amen. Do you receive that? Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are our very own father. We are your very own children. And that, Lord, we uh, have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, out of Egypt into Canaan, and we prosper continually. We're grateful, sir, and out of obedience, we give, of, give to you and your house our first fruits. Now, Jesus, we come before you, sir, and we acknowledge you as our high priest. Glory to God. And uh, we just lift you up and we bring our tithe and our offering and our seed. Our heart is in it. And we bring it before you and we confess before you. Words, words that have expectation of good things, words that are conducive to harvest, words that don't have unbelief in them, and we ask you to take it to the Father and worship him on our behalf. Well, Lord, we believe you're doing that right now, and as a result, we believe we have tithers' rights. We claim it. We take it right now. We decree that the devourer is rebuked for our sake, that the seed eaters shall not eat our harvest, but our harvest is coming into us unhindered as we've given. It's being given to us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Now, I want you to say this after me in the name of Jesus. In the last hour... I have been chosen, I have been commissioned to handle and move kingdom resources and finances. 
Those finances are coming to me and moving through me for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, I take pleasure in being a part of this assignment. Jesus' name, shout amen if you believe. Thank you, Lord. Give him one more praise as you take your seats. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, does anybody believe that? Do you believe it automatically or do I need to pump you up to believe it? Do you just believe it? Well, glory be to God. I tell you what, um, my wife and I were talking and, um, and uh, we were talking about that when you are, when your life is When you have a realization that your life is for the purpose of the kingdom of God and that your schedule and everything you do is for the kingdom, at times you can get into just sort of plowing. You know, that means you, you know, you got that seed in the field and you're sowing and cultivating and cultivating. And you can do that so much where you're not even really looking up. And before you know it, you've raised your head up and guess what's happened? Harvest is coming into you. Glory be to God. Now, I'm not okay with harvest just working for me and Chelsea. I'm not okay with that. Because... By the grace of God, it absolutely is working for us. But I'm not okay until I see that harvest is working for you. Amen? Amen. Until I see you running over into harvest. You having testimonies about the amazing, the impossible happening in your life on purpose. Amen? I'd say you need to be looking for that because it's coming to this house. Do you receive that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You need to be looking for it, and you need to be calling it in before you ever see it. Well, why do you talk so much about money, Pastor Al? Well, number one, I'm not just talking about money. And number two, if talking about money offends you, you're religious. That's, that's the problem. You just need to go on and get back in the Word and get it together. That, that's why it offends you. Amen. But we're not going to stop, and we're going to keep saying what the Lord says, and, uh, and it's going to keep working for those who work it. Amen? Amen. I want you to uh, turn over with me really quick, and uh, we're going to jump back right into uh, a series that we've been dealing with over in Matthew chapter 6, and... Uh, we're going to pick back up in verse 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Does everyone have that? Now, um... Let's pray. Uh, let's take a minute. Let's pray in the spirit here before we uh, move on. Let's pray in the spirit. We're going to pray in the spirit for just a good minute or two. If you're okay with that, you okay with us doing that on camera? You ain't shy about it, is you? Malia sandari kando shandi ebe manti ankratili pitondo kroba yesto nola sarakono shiki andi. Mosondo kondi bi santeliki a te bisondo. Mosandele korom morobe a shikrandele bi sokoda. Mandele se korom ene sakrandi eko. Mo koronda le si karandi kondo. Mo karandi e se krandele se krondele se krota. Yeah, Lord, I see that. I see that. 
Kurondele sia kratia na sacro bele se krati. Ma kurondele se kurondele se konde. Oh, that's for me, not for them. See that. Hold that. Moshendele betana kranduro se krendi. Manduro se kurondele se krandi eto kuronda se. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are an awesome, wonderful, amazing Father. And Lord, we're so grateful to be a part of such a wonderful kingdom. We're so grateful to be a part of such a wonderful ministry where we can hear the good news, Lord, where we understand that we are above only and not beneath that we're not victims in the name of Jesus. That your desire is to do good to us and to bless us and make us a success in every area of life. And as we do so, you get the glory, you get the credit, and men and women are drawn to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you would speak a word through me today that is clear, that is easy to be understood, and that your anointing would fall fresh on me in this place, doing for me what I cannot do in my own strength. And Lord, I pray that the word that comes through me today is clear, and that it's easy to be understood, that the eyes of the understanding of those who hear are opened and enlightened, that this word also comes forth with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. I thank you for that now. Satan, I break your power. I cancel every demonic assignment against the proceeds the proceeding of this word preached today. I cancel your assignment and I decree this word is going forward and it shall not be hindered by you or any of your camp. In Jesus' name, come on, shout amen if you agree with that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, where the word is concerned, You've got to pull on this, and uh, as I believe that as you pull on this, then revelation will come out and uh, fix and answer and change things for you. Amen? You know, David, when he was in a really tight place, in while he was in the process of pursuing his destiny in the Lord, the Bible says that David had gotten to a place to where his family had been kidnapped and stolen and his army was depleted and, and the men that he did have were all threatening to stone him and kill him for something that wasn't even his fault. And on top of that, he was just plain out tired, physically worn out with what they'd been dealing with. And as a result, the Bible said that David encouraged himself. Isn't that something? And after he encouraged himself, David went out and he consulted the Lord and he said, Lord, shall I pursue? And the Lord said, yeah, go ahead and pursue and you're going to recover everything. David went out. He got everything back that was stolen from him. But he initiated it even when he didn't feel like it and encouraged himself. Are you with me? And sometimes in kingdom living, uh, you're going to, you and I are going to find ourselves in situations where we feel like we're depleted, where we don't have anything left, and sometimes things have happened that have just, 
just knocks you down, come out of nowhere. And uh, you're going to have to understand that quitting or turning back or giving up or feeling sorry for yourself, which is very easy to do, is just not an option. Glory be to God. You are going to have to stand up toe to toe against those circumstances and say, I know my God will make a way for me. This is not the end for me. I know I'm coming out on this. I'm coming out on the under, other end of this thing on top. Amen. You received that? Let's go ahead and jump into this text. Now, what's going to be behind that? What's going to give you the ability to pull that kind of strength from the Lord when you need it is a life of intimacy with the Lord. Having a real, consistent, effective prayer life. Amen? So we talked about last week, we can know all the rules of faith. We can know all the laws. We can have revelation of the word of God. But a prayer life and fellowship with the Lord is going to give us the energy to act on all the things that we do know. How many uh, believe that having a prayer life is important? You believe having a prayer life is important? How many will acknowledge that a prayer, having a consistent, effective prayer life can be challenging? Can we, we, do, we acknowledge that? Ooh, you know, when we say having a prayer life is important, we'll do like this. Then we say, how many believe it's to acknowledge this challenging? Same people will be like, no, just go and do it like this. Go and put both hands up. It's the same. It's the same God. You, you don't have to, nobody care. Just go on and just embrace it. Glory be to God. Now, it may be challenging, but it is absolutely necessary. And in this church, we're going to get it. We're going to lick this thing. Glory be to God. We're going to keep on preaching it. Until we walk in it. We just came out of love. When we finished that love series, people are walking in love more now than they were before we started that series. And it's going to be the same way. We're going to be praying more as we come out of this series. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, in Matthew chapter 6, this is still a part of the year of divine assistance. The Lord showing us how to get results that are beyond what we can do, how to cooperate with him and get results. Amen. Now, uh, look at verse 8, and we'll pick up right there. And I see my clock moving on me now. Jesus, according to Matthew, makes this statement. He says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. So the idea here is of people praying, first of all, to a father. Now, in the Jewish culture at this time, God was not known as father. God to the Jews at this time was known as God. There was no sort of intimacy as it related to as it relates to relationship, whereby in their thinking in any context, they would have related to God as Father. He was God. He was uh, Jehovah, okay? But he certainly wasn't Father. So when Jesus is going around talking uh, about God as though uh, he is his Father, people were a little offended by that. Man, that was different. You know, what do you mean? Like, what, what are you talking about? A just totally separated, far away God in the sky that is all powerful. Yes, but anything closer to that where we would dare refer to him as father is a little blasphemous. You understand? So the Jews were a religious people. Okay? Now, Jesus... Talking to the disciples, 
explaining to them that, hey, as a result of my death and eventually my resurrection, things are going to be different for, for you guys as it relates to God. You are going to be interacting with God as though he is your very own father. That's, that was a big, big deal. Now he says here that when you interact with him, you need to understand this, that he already knows what you have need of before you ever ask him. Here's what he's dealing with. He was explaining to them that they have a covenant with the Father. Okay? Now, what is a covenant? Covenant is an agreement between two parties. And each partner in the covenant has sworn to fulfill their portion of the covenant to the covenant partner. Does that make sense? Let me get uh, some help with this. Let me get Brother Cam, if you wouldn't mind to come up and help me, and Brother Ishmael, why don't you come up here and help me? Uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to keep uh, the people awake. Glory be to God with this little demonstration here. Have mercy. If you want to stand right there, sir, and you stand right there if you don't mind. Now, when a covenant agreement was made, two people, and I'm going to give you the short version of this, Turn that light on over there if you don't mind. Let there be light. Glory to God. And uh, it'll come on. Two people would make an agreement. And uh, it was based on strengths and weaknesses. This covenant partner had a strength, but he also had a weakness. This covenant partner had a strength, and he also had a weakness. So a covenant would allow two people to come together so that together there would be no weaknesses, that the other one would cancel out the weakness of the other covenant partner. Now, in this particular case, Jesus is saying that as a result of my death and my resurrection, there is now going to be a covenant between God and man. And he's telling the disciples that you're going to need to pull on that covenant that even though that covenant will be in place, that covenant is going to require you to receive the benefits of it by faith. Not working hard for it, not begging for it, not beating yourself up, and that's the balance that we always gotta watch, particularly in faith living, but being so immersed in the reality of what's already yours that you are so convinced of how real it is that you'll begin to say things as though what you're saying is absolutely going to come to pass. That you'll begin to talk as though certain things already belong to you and you'll expect them. Now, he says that these uh, hypocrites here or these religious people, they don't understand that. So not their praying or their prayer doesn't have an understanding of any covenant talk right here. And uh, they don't have a covenant, all right? So there's not really a real expectation for God to provide whatever they're needing. So they're just going through the motions, similar to Christian living where you can just kind of go through the motions where you're never really stretching yourself, where you're never putting God on the stage to give him the opportunity to do the impossible, to meet your every need. It's where you just kind of live without anything eventful, anything wonderful, anything amazing happening in your life. Are you with me? Yes, now, in this case, where that covenant is concerned, both parties made an agreement in blood. Literally, at the time, they would cut themselves and they would mingle their blood with their covenant partner and then they would swear 
and confess their part of the covenant. Are you still here? Or have you gone home? It's okay, Lord. It's okay, angels. I'm talking to the people online. Glory be to God. Now I'm talking to you too. But and they would in some cultures it wasn't completely uncommon for there to be a sacrifice and the and the animal's neck was cut and the blood was poured out in a little canal and a little ditch dug. And both covenant partners would walk up and down in that ditch. So I want you to walk that way and you walk this way. Go, don't, don't run each other over. But. <laughs> and they would walk up and down. Go, go ahead, do it again. Keep going. Glory be to God. And they would be walking up and down in that ditch. And they would be declaring, that's good, their part of their covenant fulfillment to their covenant partner. So this one would be walking up and down and saying, I swear, watch this, upon the penalty of death that I will fulfill my covenant obligation to provide financially for my covenant partner. And then this covenant partner says, I swear upon the penalty of death to provide um, protection and armed forces to my covenant partner, I'd rather die than not fulfill it. This was the covenant. Now Jesus is telling the disciples that when you pray, pray as though you are aware that you have a covenant with a partner who has sworn to fulfill all the things you need. He has committed to and has already sworn to it. And as a matter of fact, he is absolutely desperate to fulfill it. But yet, you're still going to need prayer to receive it. Amen. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Isn't it interesting that it will not just automatically happen? I guess if it would just automatically happen, we all be on easy street. Like Brother Hagen would say, wouldn't you prefer, can, can I just, can you get honest in church? Wouldn't you just prefer that it worked that way? Wouldn't you just prefer that it would just, Lord, okay, I'm saved. Rain down. You know that I'm in need. Isn't it a misunderstanding in this area that could cause a person to be like, Lord, I'm living for you. I'm a Christian and I'm living right. And yet you know that I need this. You saw in the video, the woman said, Lord, you know that I want to be married and I want a husband. Why haven't you given it to me yet? See, she was under the impression she mentioned that, Lord, maybe you have abandoned me. Well, that's totally against the character of God, because as a covenant individual, <clears throat> he has swore to fulfill his portion of the covenant to his covenant partner. Glory be to God. Everything that you have need of, he has already provided and checked yes that you can have it. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Now, Jesus is instructing the disciples in this way to let this inform their prayer life. Can you imagine to those people at that time how huge and amazing that concept would have been? Can you imagine to those people this would have been the first time Anybody in all of existence in terms of societal living would have ever heard of the possibility of such benefits actually belonging to them on purpose and now being instructed to pray being mindful of that. So that means when I go pray, I'm not actually going to inform God only about my need I'm actually now legally taking something that already belongs to me and I'm presenting it before the court and I'm saying, hey, I am filing a, pet a petition so that I can receive my legal inheritance concerning this. And the believer is instructed to do that in the form of prayer. Are you with me so far? Amen. 
Are you still here or have you gone home? Did I get too wordy? Did I, did I lose you? Are, are you right sure you're still here? Well, glory to God. Now watch this. <clears throat> can you take a little bit more? Can you stand up here a little bit longer? You can handle this? So as long as you're here, they're going to stay awake. So as long as y'all stand up here, they're going to be focused. Now watch this. Now, your father knows what you need before you what? Why in the world are you needing to ask him? Because spiritual law is in place. Nothing transfers from heaven to your life without faith. Are you with me? Faith is an assurance or total convincing or an awareness or a discovery of one's benefits. I'm aware of the benefits that I have. Letter in the mail telling me that there was a check for $1,300 waiting on me down at downtown office in Sweet B. I got that letter, so I am now aware of it. I am convinced that it's real, and now I am going to receive it. I'm not going to the office to ask if I can have my $1,300. I'm going to find out, hey, what do I need to do to receive what's already mine? Are you with me? Now, faith is being assured of what belongs to you, and then faith is released. Am I getting too deep for you right here? Quite possibly. Let me, let me make it even plainer. Faith then needs to be released out of your mouth so that it goes into the spirit realm and releases what belongs to you into your life. So then if this is done through prayer, then that means prayer is not silent. Are you hearing me? Prayer is not silent. Prayer is not in my head. In order for faith to be involved, then one writer says, we believed and therefore what? He said, they believe and therefore they spoke. He said, we having the same spirit of faith or the same operation of faith believe and therefore we speak. Faith is not operational until it is released by words. So a prayer life that is not used with audible words is a prayer life that is going to be void of faith. It's going to affect your results. You've got to get comfortable with talking out loud when you pray. Your words have power. They are, they are vibrational. They transcend the material realm. And they are laws. Are you with me? So I can't just be going around praying in my head. Watch this when I'm praying in my head. You see? When I first came into faith and I found out that I needed to pray out loud, when I first heard of the word of faith, I was in prison, and I felt like it was the most ridiculous thing on the planet. It really upset me. Like, how in the world? Like, Ben, if the man is God, why can't he hear me? in my mind if he's really God and I had to keep going back to that word and it honestly took me some time to accept that and get my mind renewed to the reality that faith and what I pray must come out of my mouth are you with me so far Amen. I encourage you to do the same thing as I look back now I'm like how could I ever have thought any different my goodness now it doesn't mean your prayer have to be all loud screaming on the rooftop because he just told these people that they think they'll be heard by vain repetition, saying pointless words out loud over and over as though that will cause them to be heard. That's not what this is about. As a matter of fact, this kind of prayer is done in private. Are you with me? Amen. Now, look at verse 9. i got to move from that. I could stay on that verse for 20 minutes more. But let's move. Verse 9. After this manner... You that have a covenant and you that understand to receive from that covenant, 
you're going to have to make an informed audible request. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, I understand, I understand that to receive from heaven, that to receive from heaven I, must make I must make an educated, an educated informed, informed audible, audible request, request or verbal request. Or verbal. Did you get that? Yes, Do you understand that? Yes. In order to receive from heaven, this would be the same thing for the children. The children, you want a new, you want to, you're approaching the age where you want a car, you know your mama can't afford the car, then if you want to receive the car from heaven, then you need to make a verbal request out of your mouth that is educated. Where does the education come from? Somewhere you needed to find out that God is, has given you the car. And where are you going to find that out at? You're going to find that out in the mouth of the preacher. You're going to find that out in the, in the written word of God. Are you with me? Amen. Now, look at verse 9. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want, um, I want you both to have a seat on that front row somewhere, wherever you can, you can make it, because I'm going to need you in a second. Now watch this. You can move that over if you need to a little bit. Now look at verse 9. After this manner. Let's turn the heat down just a tiny bit. After this manner. That's what he's telling the disciples. Therefore pray ye. Now folks, what he's talking about right here is not in reference to to a repeating of what is known as the Lord's Prayer. Has anyone ever heard of the Lord's Prayer in here? Yes. Come on, let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. I don't know if there's any one text in the Bible committed to memory by the people of the earth and Christian people that has absolutely no power coming out of it for the people that are quoting it. I mean, in my spirit, man, there is almost a righteous indignation concerning the fact that all these millions of people that can quote that, that text have absolutely no idea what it means. They're not getting any of the benefits. I'm, I'm, ab I'm abhorred uh, at all the movies made of what we just quoted. I'm most disgusted at how it's been used. Absolutely 100% almost pointless, glory be to God. The way the Christians have abused and misused and have no idea what they are talking about in this particular case. Absolute pointless. I'm telling you that if you go down in your prayer and you quote that, it would have been the equivalent of saying, going down on your knees and saying, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I'm, maybe you might get more benefits from that prayer than you will from quoting what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. 
Ooh, that anointing that came on me in here, glory be to God. Couldn't even hardly walk when I first came in. Now I feel razzle-dazzle. <laughs> feel all hot inside. Have mercy. Now, no, this is not a prayer to be quoted. This is instruction as to what to understand for an effective prayer life. He was telling the disciples, when you pray, here are some things that you need to understand if you are expecting prayer to work. If you are expecting to get results from prayer. Satan knows that. That's why he dumbed it down and twisted it, right? Wow. I'll tell you what. Sunday morning is just the time to just, just get relaxed and quiet and just sleep. I'll tell you what. If you knew what my schedule was this week, if you knew that I, I worked, I put in about 60 plus hours this week and I'm still here full of boiling energy and enthusiasm and the pursuit of all of my goals, dreams, and responsibilities, you'd, be, you'd make yourself, you say, flesh, shut up, we're going to be attentive, shut up, we're going to receive, glory to God. Well, I don't know if they believe it, Chelsea, I don't know. It. Now watch this, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. You need to pray understanding this, our Father. Jesus taught them that God is no longer just Jehovah. He is now your Father. As a result of what I'm about to do, He is going to be your very own Father, and you are now His very own children. There is an intimacy there that has never been known to man before. Them hearing that, oh. That's crazy. Wow. That's what would have been their response. Watch this. Our Father, where is He? Who art in heaven? Is He in the statue? You know, it's Buddha. It's not Buddha He's talking about. It's, it's not Muhammad. It's not Confucius. It's, it's not the star. It's not the moon. It's not Zeus. I tell you where Zeus is, he sure ain't in heaven. You hear me? Zeus, Hercules, and all the rest, they're not in heaven. Those are demons. Do you understand that? Those are demon personalities. What does that mean? Buddha, he's not real. He's a fraud. Do you get that? All of these, they're frauds. None of them are real. Do you get it? No, you're praying to a very real individual, the father of all of existence, and he lives in an actual planet called heaven. Very real place. Now watch this. Our father, who art in heaven, notice this next word, hallowed be thy name. Does everybody see that right there? Hallowed be thy name. In the Greek, that word hallowed means this. Come down, maybe move on just a tiny bit. To render or acknowledge and also to consecrate. To render or acknowledge. Now, come, uh, brothers, come in, come in, Brother Cam, and help me right here. I want you to stand right here on that stage for me. I want you to, I'm going to give you some things to acknowledge, okay? And then we're going to consecrate or transfer the benefits of those things you acknowledge to Brother Ishmael. Come here, Brother Ishmael. Now I want you to stand right here and I want you to face that way. Now, I want to give you some things to acknowledge. Healing. Say, God is my healer. God is my healer. Say, God is my provider. God is my protector. God is my protector. God is my comfort. 
God is my restorer. God is my restorer. God is the healer of my sorrow. God is the healer of my sorrow. God is my joy. God is my joy. God is my strength. God is my strength. God is my defender. God is my defender. He's my lawyer. He is my lawyer. God is my judge. God is my judge. God is the God of the impossible. God is the God of the impossible. Of the unlikely. God transcends, say God transcends, God transcends. Natural, natural impossibilities. Impossible. Now understand what I'm doing here. I'm quoting different attributes or different things that God did in the Old Testament yes. for his people. These are all things that God did in the Old Covenant for his people. Are you with me? And there are many more. But when Jesus is telling the disciples right here that now hallowed. See, every time God did something for his people, there was a name he attached to it in a lot of cases. Names like Jehovah what? Jehovah Jireh, my what? My provider, Jehovah Nisi, and so forth and so on. Well, Jesus is telling these disciples that now as a result of my death and my resurrection, hallowed or consecrated or transferred are all the benefits that God ever gave to mankind over to you. They now all belong to you. Every benefit that God ever gave to man through all of existence now belong to you. In your life now, your covenant includes God as your protector, as your healer, as your comfort, as your financier, as your doctor, as your lawyer. Do you see that? Now he says, have faith in that. Use your faith concerning this. Pray understanding that those benefits are already yours. When you go to prayer, understand, ask based off of knowing that everything you need or want already belongs to you. Hallowed be thy name. Do you receive that? Can you imagine that, my brother? Hallowed be the name to you. Whatever it is that you're needing or that you're lacking or that you want or that is incomplete, you don't need to stress it because hallowed be the name that covers all of those benefits belong to you. If you don't have it, it's because you're not asking. You're not receiving it by faith. Amen. You're going to need a prayer life for this. Right. Now can you see why Satan will fight so hard to keep you from prayer? Amen. He will fight to keep you. What can Satan do with somebody that, do you know everything that God did in the Old Testament, he was having to do it to fight off Satan's advances? Yes. When Satan, when the battle of Jericho was taking place, God is performing supernatural miracles so that the Jews can advance and take over territory. And Satan is doing everything he can to resist it. Well, the same thing is happening right now. Amen. All of the benefits of God have been given to you because Satan is trying to resist every good thing that you do. Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. So he's got to keep you disconnected from the power source. 
because he knows that this name won't do anything for you if it stays up here in heaven. Speaking of that, look at the next verse in that same verse or verse 10. Now, thy kingdom come. Now, let, let, me, let me do this. Um, let me do, Mama Gracie, will you come up here and help me before I need some of that, some of that anointing to rub off in the building. Glory be to God. Such, such diligence right here. Glory be to God. Prayed both of her sons into a right relationship with the Lord. Have mercy. Tell me God ain't working miracles. Have mercy. Come up here, Mama Gracie. Now, she's representing the word kingdom right here in the Greek is the authority backed by a government. More specifically, the authority and the government of heaven where God himself resides and lives. Okay? So it's one thing to say, you know, I have everything God has, you know, but when you start getting more specific and get a revelation of this thing, you need something tangible to look at or to consider. And you've got to start looking at what the actual benefits are. Okay? Now, yet yeah, this is God and all that he's provided, but these are the actual benefits under God's authority, under <coughs> God's jurisdiction. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, he says here, thy kingdom or thy authority and thy government now come. Now, I want you to see, here's this word, this word come in the Greek right here has a variety of, uh, of uh, different explanations. And I'm not a Greek scholar, so the best I can do is give you the idea of it implica of its implications it means this number one it's the idea of in the Greek paints pictures it's activity going back and forward from heaven in this case, and the earth. So I want you to stand back here a little bit. Stand, stand right here. There you go. Now, I want you to come here, Mama Grayson. Walk to your son, to his side. Now, walk back up to that place. Yep, now do it again. Look at a young spring chicken right here. <laughs> this ought to be your example. Glory be to God, right here. Full of boiling energy and enthusiasm. You see that? Got more energy than 20 and 30 year olds walking around. Do it one more time. Now, do you see what's happening? Oh, I see it. Do you see what's happening here? Yeah. The idea of come is resources from one realm mm -hmm. going to another realm and activity between the two going back and forth. There is a transfer, a communication, or even a reciprocity, if I'm not being too deep with that word. It's almost like trading, going back between heaven and the earth. Are you with me right here? Amen. Now, he says, in your prayer, you need to be praying in line with the activity and the benefits of heaven going back and forth between heaven and the earth right here. That. This is the idea of people that are cooperating in heaven with heaven that understand 
that they are, they are a part of an agenda. They are a part of an assignment. That's not big enough, Lord. What's the more taliapo? Tare corombe le si grande si crondo. That they are officers and ambassadors of heaven that are transferring benefits from between heaven and the earth. This is not the individual that is living life in survival mode. This is a person that understands that I'm higher than that. That I'm, I'm like, it's like, you know, how can I, you know, Lord, I, I come out of the streets, so I, I, I don't know where to compare it to, but th this is like, this is like a person that, you know, you, you went from, uh, you went from uh, selling, uh, you know, hustling on the corner uh, to now you got 10 trap houses, glory be to God. And uh, trap houses all over the place and, and the product is being ran even while you sleep, glory be to God. It's a bigger operation. Do you understand that? Amen. This is the mentality of operation that Jesus is wanting the disciples to understand where prayer is concerned because now prayer is actual warfare. We're getting things done in prayer that are being done from a supernatural standpoint that can't be done any other way. So then, is it possible that when I am experiencing a failure or a delay in certain areas of my life, could it be because I'm not engaged in the reciprocity of prayer concerning it? You made that word too deep, Pastor Al. Simplify. Could it be possible that I'm not praying accurately from an understood position concerning this area? So the cargo's not being moved the way it needs to be moved because I don't understand. Not because God won't do it. Not because I can't have it. He wants me to have it. He wants to do it. But I've, I've got to understand how this channel is working. Are, are you with me right here? Prayer is my channel. I, the load up here is too big. I can't get it down here any other way. I've got to do it supernaturally. I need the wings of the angels to transport and fly this thing down. Does that make sense? Yes. I can't go pull it on my own. I need supernatural help to get this thing down here. Are you with me? Yes. Now, thy kingdom, there's a verse that corroborates this in Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 18 through 20, that says this. Whatsoever is bound in what? In heaven is also what? Bound in the earth. Whatsoever is loosed from heaven is also what? Loosed in the earth. So you see, the authority actually that comes from heaven the individual in the earth that is engaged in prayer. Amen. Do you see that? Yes. One translation renders that verse that says, uh, whatsoever you bind from the earth is already bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose from the earth is already been loosed and approved in heaven. Amen. So you are doing the loosing. You lose the benefits. Okay. Now, how is it that you can have this much power yeah. and you can't bring anybody to Christ? Yeah. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> if it's not you they can come to to be healed or to be delivered, 
then, then I, there's no hope. There's nowhere to go. Oh, I understand. You, you've just been hiding, right? You, you've been hiding. You, you don't, you don't want to be found. Sitting over in the corner with all that power. You're in the work environment, and nobody even knows that you have the power in you to fix their entire situation. You could cause, I, they've got family members dying that you could be getting healed. They're on their people on their way to hell and you're hiding in a corner because you don't want to be uncomfortable or inconvenience. You're self-absorbed. Do you see that? Condemnation will play a part in that. Condemnation sometimes is really connected to pride because you're so concerned about you and where you're missing it that you can't focus on anything else. You feel so insufficient that you're so focused on you that you can't move past you to help somebody else. We're going to break that in the name of Jesus. That's no longer going to be the case in this church. Glory be to God. You are not going to be walking out of here with the insecure, insecure, secure, insecure mentality and inferiority complex, not believing that you have the power inside of you to go and move mountains on purpose. You ought to be the one that's walking in and says, in Jesus' name, this is not going down in this region anymore. Not in my neighborhood. I break the power of what's going on in this neighborhood in Jesus' name. Devil, dry it up. I want the drugs gone now. I want the prostitution away from my block. But if you're so consumed with your survival, you're never going to step out into this. You know, this is why pastors, uh, can I tell you this? I'm not just saying it to this church. This is why pastors are retiring. And this is why pastors are stepping down from their churches. And this is why pastors are dying. Do you get a, you get a movement on that? Do you get movement on that? Come here for a second. Let me explain something to you guys that you may not know about your first lady here. Um Chelsea has what you call a manifestation, and there are multiple manifestations of this gift, the gift of discernment. And the gift of discernment is not just where you just sense, I could just sense that you ain't right. No, 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 no. The gifts of the Spirit are meant for edification. They're not meant for self-glory so that you can make people feel bad and be put on a pedestal of how deep you are. That's not the heart of the gifts of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit won't work through that kind of heart. Satan will take that open door that was meant for God and use it and pervert what you're doing. Okay? Now, but Chelsea has a legitimate, authentic gift of discernment. And it manifests itself through her where she can literally, in her body, feel movement in the spirit. When there is activity in heaven and when there is even demonic activity around her, she can feel it and it hits her physical body like she is right there in the midst of what's happening. It all also manifests through her in the form of dreams uh, as well. But it's a gift that has been given to the body of Christ and particularly to, to this church. And it helps us identify things that otherwise we would never be able to see. It helps us recognize traps. It helps us recognize when witchcraft is being used. There are times where we'll break it, where we could be uh, 
uh, we, I pick up on something in the spirit and, and her and I, that gift works together for the two of us. And I can pick up something in the spirit and the Lord will tell me and then I'll break it and then she will feel that it has been broken. Just like just now. Just now when I was talking about the pastors dying because the members, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but because the members have chosen to be hid in the corner and selfish and not doing their part and it overworks those pastors and it literally kills them. Well, when I said that, what happened? Um, particularly when you were saying the inferiority and security was very strong. And so you've got to understand that there are things that are happening in the realm of the spirit that are bigger than what you and I can see. Do you understand that? There are things that are happening in the realm of the spirit that we can't deal with any other way than through the avenue of prayer. Does that make sense? Okay, you can go back over there. Now, let me say this. Mama Gracie, you can have a seat. I'm almost done. I got just five minutes. Can you take five more minutes of this? Amen. Thy kingdom come... Now watch this. Thy will. Give me another word for will. Just in your own opinion. Thy will, I would say. If I say, man, um, I will for you to come out to dinner with me after church. Your desire. Desire. Want. My agenda. Now, in this case, a will, when you see this word will in the Bible, guys, it's referring to what a person desires or wants that was already previously recorded, already previously established. So concerning the kingdom and its government and its benefits, the prayer here or the mindset Jesus is telling these folks to have is this, that that agenda of God and what he wants being done in the earth. Thy will, the want the desire, what has already been established and predetermined in earth being done down here. Yes. Do you see that? Yes. Now watch this. Is there any sickness in heaven? Nope. Why? Why is there no sickness in heaven? Because he doesn't want it. He doesn't will it. Did you see that? So, if there's no sickness in heaven, then you need to pray in line with the fact and the reality that there's no sickness in your house or no sickness in your body. Therefore, when you pray, Lord, I thank you that you've already taken sickness and disease away from my midst. I thank you, Lord, that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. See that? Is, is there any poverty in heaven? Is anybody broke, struggling to pay the rent, the bills? No. Why? God doesn't he doesn't want it. He doesn't want it. So, shouldn't you be praying in line with what God wants in, in the earth? In your family? In your household? In your community? In your neighborhood? In your church? What about that? In your church? Shouldn't you be praying in line with that? Making requests in line with what you... Obviously, you wouldn't want to go against what God wants, would you? No, sir. So when you have a problem with prosperity, what you're basically saying is, I have a problem with the will of God. I have a problem with, God, with what God wants. God, if you wanted poverty so bad, why don't you got a little bit up there where you live? Why are you leaving it all down here? I get mad at me. Let me move on. Get razzled back. Okay. 
on earth as it is where? In heaven. Our job in prayer is to transfer the environment and the government and the dictates of heaven and its agenda over into the earth. We do this through prayer. In your prayer life, what you're supposed to be doing is dragging down the benefits of heaven over into the earth and where your jurisdiction is. Where is your jurisdiction? Your house, your job, your neighborhood, your church, your family, Anywhere you have influence, your government, your city, your state, you're supposed to be making a dent everywhere you go. You're supposed to be running. Can I testify? Let me take my glasses off of this. I know some of, I know I'm subject to get a, maybe a bad comment or, Somebody uh, accusing me of being the devil or prideful or boastful. So what? Listen, you're looking at a man that by the grace of God is running things. You're looking at a man that by the grace of God and by believing this, I'm able to call some shots. Do you understand? By the grace of God, I'm able to determine if somebody is going to have a paycheck or if they're not going to have a paycheck. I, we are getting over into a place where we're able to affect generations with our influence. You can't let that stop at just me in the pulpit. Every single one of you are supposed to be doing something similar to what I'm doing in my life where you are assigned. Can I challenge you to get with this bigger program? And you know where you're going to start it from? You're going to start it in prayer. You're going to see it's in prayer where you're going to get in line with that kingdom agenda. If you get this right, you're going to get in line with that kingdom agenda, agenda and prayer. You'll be like, whoo, wait a minute. Mm. You mean to tell me all of my needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus? You can literally start eradicating the curse everywhere you go. Let me tell you something small. I'm able to dictate because I gained the resources by the grace of God and it gave me influence. So in the areas where I have jurisdiction, I'm able to outlaw curse words. It may be little to you, but I'm trying to get you to see something right here. I'm able to outlaw curse words. So in my jurisdiction, Whenever they are in my jurisdiction, cursing is not allowed. Amen. Do you see? Yes. That's influence. That's the kingdom agenda transferred to where I am. I'm able to outlaw drugs within my jurisdiction. You see? I'm able to outlaw um, inappropriate sexual relationships within my jurisdiction. What am I acting out? The will of God in heaven as it is in heaven. Where at? In the earth. Where at in the earth? In my jurisdiction. I'm able to dictate that in my home as it is in heaven, so is it in my home. Do you see that? I can control that. I can control that. I have complete and total jurisdiction concerning it. 
What I say where my jurisdiction is concerned is the law. That's what the Lord will, he will give you that. Wherever your jurisdiction is, glory be to God. Are you seeing this? Oh, fighting. Fighting to get this out. Is the will of God as it is in heaven being activated in your life and in your jurisdiction? If it's not, the place you got to start is in prayer. Jesus, this whole thing in this Lord's Prayer is instructing them on how to what? How to pray concerning the transfer of these things. Do you see that? This is prayer. These are things that prayer will do. You can't faith over these, folks. You can't just confess over this. You can't. Do you understand that word of faith, people? You can't faith over this. Your faith will not work without this part. You need both of these working together. There have been times, man, to where I have caught myself in literally toil, trying to do this and trying to do that, and particularly at one particular time where the Lord said, Al, you're doing everything right naturally, but you're not praying concerning these things like you should. So the power release from heaven is not flooding towards you like it should. Made that adjustment in prayer, changed everything. Life, this faith life is not designed to be lived or navigated without an effective, viable, consistent, powerful prayer life. Does that make sense? Amen. It's not designed to work that way. Now, in this last text, let me say this. Verse 10, and we'll close out right here, or verse 11. And I want you to re all to read this with me on the count of three. One, two, three, read. Give us this day our daily bread. Woo-wee. What do you think about that? Give us... This day, our, watch this, sufficient yeah. supply of nourishment That's That's so well. daily. <laughs> you need a daily sufficient supply of spiritual nourishment. And that only comes through prayer. Amen. Kevin, listen, have you ever tried to successfully live this faith life without prayer? I have. You know, you see, I, can, I have. As not, not that I don't do it, that I didn't do any prayer at all. But I mean praying the way we're talking about right here. Accurate, accurate, yeah. Praying from an understanding of the authority of heaven and praying daily that way. Daily that way. Jesse Duplantis told a story, and I don't want to quote it wrong, but he told a story about how one day he got into a situation where um, I believe this was the one where he... Uh, Somebody, something happened by his house and he had to pull his gun out and uh, almost shot a man. This is after he was well-known, successful Jesse Duplantis. Actually, not even that long ago. And I believe he said one of the reasons, one of the things he learned is that day he went throughout his day without first receiving his daily bread. What does that mean? What did he neglect to do that day? Pray. Pray. Caused a man to almost kill somebody. Destroy his life. Murder somebody else. 
And can you imagine the impact that would have had on the body of Christ? You're looking at one of the most successful men that maybe the planet has ever known in ministry. Just by neglecting prayer. Prayer, let me introduce something to you in this church going forward. I wish it was an easier way. <laughs> but folks, prayer must be daily. Do you receive that? I receive it. Are we ready to make that adjustment? Amen. It's got to be daily, folks. Amen. Now, you'll have to forgive yourself. Here's what I want you to do. You go a day and you miss prayer. You know what I want you to do? Repent. How do you do it? Lord, I repent for missing prayer today. I call it unrighteousness. I know that it's not okay. And I know that I'm not intended to live without it. Forgive me and cleanse me from the unrighteousness associated right now. And here's what you're going to say to keep you out of condemnation. Are you ready? I believe I receive my forgiveness right now. And you get back up and you know what you do? You get back in prayer the next day. You miss it the next day. You know what you do? Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. From, you miss it five days in a row. Don't do this. Well, I done missed it so much, man. It's, clearly, I got a bigger problem. Ain't no use of praying now. I ain't prayed in three weeks. No, 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 no. That's foolish. Never, ever do that. I don't care what's going on. You get right back up. There is no way to consistently repent and the action not stop at some point. No way. You repent how many times? Every time. What this is going to do is enforce to your soul that we don't agree with the flesh that it's okay to live without prayer. We want to reaffirm that we cannot be successful in this life without daily prayer. The Bible says men ought to always pray and what? And not faint. You're not supposed to faint concerning prayer. You could be doing everything else. You could be witnessing. You could be tithing. You could be sowing seed. You could be going to church. You could be making your confessions. You could be believing God. You could be even listening to the word every day. But if you leave this prayer part out, you got a big gaping hole in your armor right here. Those of you, there are those of you that pray in the spirit here. Is that correct? Do I understand that right? Amen. Brother Victor, pull up really quick as we close out here. 1 Corinthians 14 chapter verse 4. Everybody standing if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 Verse 4. Now, this daily bread is the idea here in the Greek a sufficient supply. A sufficient supply of a spiritual nature. This is not physical. Prayer right here in this case is not transferring per se the amount of money you need for today. or any, that, That's not what's going on. This daily bread right here is, is spiritual supply. How do we know that? Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone or by physical nourishment, the things that are necessary for the body, <clears throat> but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So in order for a man to be complete, he needs physical substance, and he also needs spiritual substance, and he needs it daily. 
Here's one way that you can get your spiritual substance or daily supply, but it's not the only way and should not be limited to this. But we can certainly use more of this. He that speaketh in a what? Unknown tongue. Wait a minute. What are we talking about? We're talking about when a person is speaking in an unknown tongue. What is that? When a person is doing something like this. Now, by the way, if you can't do that in some variation, you have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That means, how can I help me say this, Lord? What, I'm ha what I have, you don't have this. If you have never spoken in tongues, you don't have this. When I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost, if you've not spoken in tongues yet, you are not yet filled with the Holy Ghost. Hello? Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. You can be, but you're not there yet. Now, without being filled with the Holy Ghost, trying to live this life is much harder. It's a lot harder without this. Are you with me? You need to go out and preach that. You need to go out and preach that to the people, preach it to the kids. Some of your kids are walking around. They've been born again, but they're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. They don't know anything about this prayer language. They don't, have, they don't know anything about it. They're just going through the motions. You wonder why they still act crazy because they ain't got nothing. Are you with me? You need to sit down and talk to them like they can understand what you're saying. Look them right in the eye and say, hey, your problem is... You've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. Would you like to learn how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Amen. You can get the real thing right now. Amen. Tell some of your family members that are on the line teetering. Now, some of them claim to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues better than you and still ain't got nothing. <laughs> Old saints used to say, you, instead of prophesying, you prophesy. lying. Glory be to God. Now watch this. For those of you that are born again and authentically have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm talking to you concerning this. He or when you speak in an unknown tongue, talking about praying in tongues. That's what we're talking about. Praying in the Spirit. That's what we're referring to. What about it? What does he do? He edifieth himself. The word edify right here in the Greek is literally like to charge like a battery. You need to put your faith on this. You need to see your spirit man being recharged like on purpose when you're praying in the spirit. Now, you're going to pray in the Spirit at different times for different things, but a portion of that daily, I am a huge fan of being recharged. There's one scripture says, talks about being strengthened in your spirit by his spirit, praying in tongues. Daily, be recharged. Where can you start? I encourage you. You need at least two or three to five minutes every day to pray in the spirit. You just take some time. You go in the bathroom on break and work. And when you get done, you say this. Lord, I believe I receive strength in my spirit. By your spirit, I take it now. Thank you, Lord, that I'm edified. And it'll work. Do you hear me? It'll work just like that. Believe you receive it just like that. 
He edifieth himself, but he that prophesied edifieth the church, talking about in the actual service. We're not going to get into the doctrine of that right now. But daily, I want you to begin on purpose now with faith. You don't just pray in tongues when you feel a touch from the Lord. Folks, those of you online, I know there's a lot of church people that, that I'm connected to that watch these videos online as well. I need to inform you of this. You don't wait to feel a touch to pray in tongues. You pray in tongues on purpose. On purpose. So you're going to start going out daily and you're going to pray knowing that you are receiving your daily supply of the Spirit Amen. by praying in tongues. Hey, do you get that? Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank Particularly you, Particularly at Jesus. times where there are times where you don't even know what to pray, man. You're just so locked up emotionally. Has anybody ever been there? Woo, well, you're just so locked up and mostly you can't make sense out of nothing. That's a perfect time to pray in the spirit. When you start feeling, say, hey, I don't know what to pray, but Lord, I believe I receive exactly what I prayed in the spirit. I have it now. Lord, thank you for interpretation of what I prayed in the spirit. I take that too. Glory to God. One of the best ways to untangle your emotions, when Chelsea and I were first um, delivered and we were married, and we started, you know, just because you saved and married, it don't mean you ain't going to have no problems anymore. You, you understand that, right? The same beef is going to present itself. And before, man, I just couldn't deal with it. I would just fly off. I'm angry. I may try to disappear for two, three days or whatever. But when I would feel it and I would get so overwhelmed, I learned to start doing this. I would just go to the side or walk and just start praying the Spirit. Yandoro sele kron bati, kran dele se kron dele samburon de shan kanende, enendoro sa kran dele pa, ondoro sa kran de. And as I would start doing that, you know what would happen? The Lord would begin to quicken ideas and answers right inside my heart. It seemed like a download. And it would be like a download that I could receive and that I could accept. And then my emotions would start coming back to normal. You see what I mean? Amen. Where I couldn't fathom letting it go or saying I'm sorry or admitting I was wrong. I couldn't do it naturally. When I would pray in the spirit this way, it break that thing up off of me. Give me clarity about my situation. The daily supply of the spirit. Now, sometimes you go through seasons. In my case, the Lord instructed me, not saying he's instructed you to do that way. Do it this way. You better make sure you get it right before you try to copy what I'm, what I'm going to tell you right here. And the Lord told me through um, um, a wonderful source, the way he got it over to me, he said, Al, there are times where he said, particularly for people in ministry where I have you in, where you're in certain seasons and you're being attacked on every hand. Things are being thrown at you from every direction. And seasons like that where you can't comprehend in your native language where your mind is not functional to keep up with your prayer responsibilities, because prayer is a responsibility, praying for responsibility to in the coming weeks. And at those times, Al, you need to come to me, and then you need to ask me by faith to take over your prayer responsibilities. 
and that will allow you during that season to dedicate yourself to praying in the spirit. So when I'm in that season, every day, all day, instead of my normal prayer structure, all I do is just pray in the spirit. I pray in the spirit and I can sense a grace when I'm in that place because things open up and I'm able to have like a direct line of communication uh, with the Lord and we are conversing about the areas of my heart and my life that are, that are really pressing and that I couldn't really hear any other way. And uh, particularly for those of you that are in entrepreneurship and in ministry, uh, especially if you're involved in, in both in that regard, times where you're really intense and you're under pressure, a lot of pressure, that's when you need to be praying in the spirit. You're going through things that are that cause trauma and traumatic, you need to be really focused on praying in the Spirit. And as you do that, the Lord will begin to unwind things in you. And then you'll know when it's time to transition back over to praying with your native tongue. Because prayer is not just praying in the Spirit. One, The writer said, Paul said, what then? I will pray with my understanding and without my understanding, meaning I will pray in my native tongue and I will pray uh, in the spirit. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're going to need both. Did you get something out of that today? Yes. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did that make sense to you today? Yeah. Wasn't too, too high in the sky? You, you got that? No. Glory to God. Come on, let's worship the Lord for a second. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. God. We Hallelujah. give you glory. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, you do all things well. You do all things good. Oh, amazing, amazing is what you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we honor you. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I want to open up the altar right now for anybody. If the Lord has spoken to you about, if you got a revelation of prayer today concerning this, and the Lord has dealt with you in your heart, come up and let me anoint you, and, I'm, and this thing is going to get you started off right. There's an anointing here that's going to cause that prayer to sustain Come on up. Glory be to God. Get right here. Start that line right there in the name of Jesus. Start it softly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is not a condemnation line. Glory be to God. If you've got a, the Lord has dealt with you about the necessity of this kind of prayer life and opened up the eyes of your understanding concerning the warfare.